So thank you for coming. Um, before I, I get into uh, my spiel of the intro of why I tried it and stuff, uh, how many people have used SpeedGrader? Okay, so you probably know as much as I do and could be up here presenting this. <laughs> so um, the, the reason I, I uh, told John I could probably do this in Karen is, is because it is probably the, the one thing I feel like I am confident in, in Canvas. <laughs> and there's so many ways to navigate camp, uh, Canvas and the same thing with SpeedGrader. There's a couple different ways to do that. And the reason we went to Canvas, I, I think we were early adapters, weren't we? Yeah. So I co-teach with uh, Colleen Colby in the PT program right across the street here. And we have taught this course um, called Foundations of Physical Therapy for several years, six, seven years. And we were kind of at a place where there weren't any huge changes coming along. So we were like, okay, let's just mess with the course and we'll use Canvas this year. And I'm like, well, that's a great idea because I took on a professional seminar series. And so I just moved all my courses to Canvas, uh, which seemed brilliant in the thinking stage, not so brilliant in the carrying out stage. Um, but it all worked out. We have some lessons learned from that. Uh, I don't know if you've heard stories of the good and bad of Canvas. I think the one thing I would like to share with you as, as a foresight is that Clean and I, like I said, had this course pretty well uh, laid out. You know, we always make fine-tuned things in the semester. Nothing's ever exactly the same. Um, the course content was usually rated by students as fairly um, high. They enjoyed it. It was interactive. It was organized. Um, this year, we received comments on the course that it was disorganized, they didn't understand the flow. We were seeing comments that we hadn't seen in the past probably four years. That's when we started kind of taking this course on and working together. So don't be surprised, I think, if that happens. And I think part of it is, is trying to get into the student's mind. We really went into Canvas as a Learn at UW base. And so we used, and we continue to use because I'm evolving, is the modules. We didn't use pages and links to pages and put the pages into the modules. And what we found out were two, were two things. One, as students went to the pages um, section, or the files, excuse me, um, to look for the information, and we hadn't organized the files at all, and we had organized everything by modules. But when you get out of the modules, it flips them back to files, it seemed. What we also didn't realize is that when you import, or excuse me, when you export data from Learning UW and you import it into Canvas, none of the files are hid anymore. So there was information in the files from like 2012. I'd never seen it before because in Learning UW they were always hid. They didn't get imported into the next course. And the students were like, which is kind of a silly question in some ways, well, what, what syllabus do we use? And I'm like, well, not the one that says 2012. Okay, <laughs> the current year would be good. But there was still confusion beyond that. Um, so a couple of things that we, we learned um, at the end of the semester, and we had our own struggles with thinking we had published something, but it wasn't published, or we thought it was published, but it was only published in the module, it wasn't published in the file. So putting all that stuff together. So if you're using Canvas, you may have been through some of those those things also. So today, what I want to go over is just really um, maybe review with some of you that you can access uh, SpeedGrader, at least that I'm aware of, by two formats. One is through the grade section, and then one is from the home page that we have up right now. Um, the other thing to just point out is that you can mute your assignments. Um, so when you go into grades, there's a, a little box, and I'll show you that in a minute. That you can just hit mute. So as you go through the assignments, the students don't see your grades until you're, you're done with them. So it's kind of like hiding a grade, in essence, until you get done um, playing around with the grades and seeing you know, how people are doing. If there's any gaps um, that you miss, sometimes I'll review things in SpeedGrader, but I won't grade them until I've read several of them to see if there's been gaps in how I taught it. Like, are there themes showing up where I'm like, I thought I said this, but maybe I didn't, and you know, points won't be taken off for my error, um, not theirs. So, video. Do you have a video? I don't have a video. Oh, okay. I thought you said a video. Okay. All right. So we're going to start with just the home page then. Um, so can you go into the home page here? You'll see on this side where it will have your to-do. So these are things that I haven't graded yet. Um, and again, you have to set the back stories. You have to set this up in assignments for it to show here. So in order to get the assignments, um, you have to go to that tab and then create your assignment. Um, so these are all the assignments the students have for this particular this particular course. Um, and then I can go back to the home page and I can hit on grade paired grading. And then um, uh, what we can go through then is where's my test? Oh, can you stop there for just a second? Yeah. Oh. 
Go back. You guys see that warning uh -huh. about uh -huh. Firefox and Crocodile? Oh, the, no. green, the green banner? There's a green banner there. That, uh -huh. Can you go back and go out of it? I don't think I've ever seen this before because I don't use Firefox. But this is an interesting. Yeah, sometimes they won't load when that happens, the full. So if you go back to assignments, do you think it'll happen again? Uh, maybe, I don't know. All right, I'm going to go back to home now. Yeah, warning. warning. Crocodile has limitations when using Firefox. Comments will not always be saved. This is interesting. James, have you seen that, Sid? Yeah. I have. Yeah. Karen has. Yeah. Yes. Okay. You have to try. It works best in, uh, in Chrome. Chrome. Yes. Interesting. Okay. And the, the, I haven't seen my comments lost, but I have seen that the full document won't load, or I can't use, I can't edit um, when I'm in there. So once you pull up your, your document, you can go to the comment section, and you can add comments. You can draw, you know, a figure in there, a shape. Uh, you can highlight the text that you want. Um, the person to pay particular attention to. Um, you can add text, you can strike out, you know, that particular, not all of it. Um, you can strike out different comments. And then you can also add, if there's not much to add there, you can just put your summative comments in here and, and done. And then enter your grade and submit, and you're done. And you can go on to the next student. So you don't have to go back and re-enter grades in the grade book. Um, you just click on the next the next one, and if there's one available, um, you just keep grading. So for some assignments, at least for our program, they, they can, they either will finish early because it's a due earlier, it's standard, or they'll just submit them early. And so if you wanted to keep up and you felt that it wasn't something you had to grade across all the students, it was more self-reflection and you just wanted to see how they're processing it, you could grade some assignments, you know, stagger your grading, so not at one night you're grading all of your assignments. Um, they're accessible that way too. So that's that in a nutshell. Um, and then if we go back to the other thing you can do is rubrics. And I understand that you already had a rubric presentation. So this is maybe somewhat redundant. But just to show, um, oh, let me go back to a different way. There's that warning again. So let me go back to. Uh, people now, and you will see some student grades, but there's only like two grades entered and they're all doing really well, so um, just kind of ignore what you're, what you're seeing. Um, that's irrelevant, but I wanted to show you, we have a test student in here, I think, yep. So you can go to your cover letter, uh, and you can see here where, where you can unmute the assignment, and I'm just going to keep it mute because um, I'm playing with the grades here, I'll change that later. I can go down to my test student and access uh, SpeedGrader here just by clicking on that box. And then um, I pop this open. Now this isn't anything that's real. And now you can make comments in that Word document and then re-upload those comments too. So before I was just in SpeedGrader, here I can download them, open them up, make comments, save them if I want, and re-upload that comment. Are there any advantages to doing that? It seems like an extra step that would not be a benefit. Yeah, the only time I've found that to be helpful is, so this is, in the course we teach in the fall, they, they write documentation notes, and sometimes there's so many comments in the early phases that it's easier for me just to blow it up and write comments on the side, and it's bigger than what's in SpeedWriter. But there is an extra step. Sometimes we keep them, for future use, we have a download to give us templates for students in the future. Sometimes that's helpful. Um, now the other thing you can do is I wanted to go back to the rubric for this one because if we go back to our home and we go into the grade the cover letter, and I'm just going to go backwards here to get to the test student. Um, because they're, well, I don't know where it is, John, but it's not getting there. If you do the arrow just a little bit of the right, it drops on the table. Oh, thank you. See? Told you. <laughs> All right. So here, um, view rubric. So I know there's always debates about, you know, rubrics. They're prescriptive. They're, you know, they're too closed or too open. Rubrics can just be grids. But if you're using rubrics, you can go through here and just assign grades. And it will give you your final grade, you save it, and that uploads it again. Okay. And you can just click on the boxes there too, right? 
Right. So there's this full bunch of no marks. Yep. Like the one before. Oh, yep, yeah, here. Right yep. Another option. So different um, full marks. So different ways to do that. If you're using rubrics, they just connect right to your assignment then. Um, so yeah, I think. Do you ever add comments that's the, with the text box right underneath the points there? Do you ever use that to add comments on like grammar and spelling? Yeah. No. <laughs> this, oh, sure. You you can specific. See, this is so. This is just another way of doing the same thing five different ways. You can add the comments in the text. You can add the comments as subtitle. If you have a rubric, you can click on that bubble and add your comments in the bubble where it applies to the rubric. So it's how kind of how your students think and how you, they kind of give you that feedback or how you work and they get used to you as the instructor. But that's three different ways to provide comments to the same document. Um, you know, sometimes I don't, you probably too don't give specific comments in here, um, but it's more just a general comment, you know, about their work in general. And so you don't have to go through and hit, you know, comment, draw, add the comment box here. Um, can, can you draw, <laughs> add a comment to that crocodile? You're in text student. That's for the test student, right? Yep. Mm -hmm. Can you just, I don't know, add a, do that and, and add a piece of text there as well? Over something. Yeah. I do. That's good. <laughs> All right. The, the reason I ask is that I want you to go into test student and see what it looks like for the students when they, mm. From once, the... once you save this, I think you have to. Submit or save or whatever. Okay. So if you want the feedback, then is what you're looking yeah, for. Yeah, I want to see where the students see that. So if I go to settings and go into student view. Sorry, what's that? You'd have to be unmuted if it was. Oh, oh yeah, I got to unmute it. Yep, mm -hmm. you're right. Right. But then it leaves a message to everyone else when you unmute. That's so true. So I kind of want to unmute it. Uh, I'll, I'll, I'll say it this morning. morning. Sorry. <laughs> It'll say it's not everybody unmuted assignments. So this is what I love about oh. the active teaching lab. I don't have all the answers. The instructor yeah. doesn't have all the answers. Yeah. But yeah. throughout everybody in the audience, we've got answers. Yeah, because so everybody will see that. For everything you do. So I didn't have any grades in, and I unmuted it, and then it's like, well, and that's how I learned about the mute button, yeah. because I had, <laughs> I had done, I think, like half of the documents, and then I think I went to a conference, and I just didn't get time at the conference to grade the other half, and students were asking me, why weren't my grades posted? And I'm like, what? And then I realized the mute button. Um, so I should have just muted them all, and then they, you know, I could finish them up without them wondering if something was going on, and there wasn't. I just didn't. Because they talk to each other, right? They're right. like, I got migrated. What happened to yours? Uh, uh, right. Yeah, it's been a couple really. days. Yeah. Yeah. So, yeah, that's how I've used Paper. Anybody else use it a different way or different access points? 